We have been uh, looking again and again and again at the Bible. Aren't you amazed at how much of the Bible has to do with end time? And end time has to do with Judgment Day. Now, I admit, we don't like to read about judgment. We don't like to talk about judgment. And yet, we must be faithful to what the Bible is teaching and uh, this is what we're trying to do, and uh, trust that as we continue this study uh, that we're now in, that you too will be learning as I am learning what God's will is for our lives and for his whole salvation program. Now, we've been spending a lot of time with the parable of the wheat and the tares, and uh, we have learned a whole lot about Satan's activities as this has been, as he has been assaulting the churches throughout the New Testament church age. And, and uh, uh, finally, we have come to an understanding of one of the most difficult passages in the Bible. Hebrews 6, where it talks about, for it is impossible, this is verse 4, for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. Uh, what are we going to do with Hebrews chapter 6? How are we going to understand it? And we're going to find, as we go through these verses very, very carefully, we're going to find that the reason these verses have been impo impossible to understand is because they are reserved for the period in which we are now living beginning with the Great Tribulation, that is the last great activity uh, together with the latter reign before Christ returns on the clouds of glory. Well, now let's go back to Hebrews chapter 5, and we'll begin to see what the problem was, why it is. Is it just kind of, uh, you know, that church has been a wonderful example of God's grace and mercy and it's been faithful all through the years and and now uh, strangely uh, we're just upset by this no end god says i'm finished with the churches and they've got a few doctrines i don't like their high places and i'm going to wipe them out is that really the situation that has been uh, uh, the character of the churches well we're going to find as we look at hebrews 5 god is saying no no, that isn't the way it is at all. Look at, he says in verse 12, let's go on to verse 12. For when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which are the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For every one that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong men belongeth to them, strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. You know, we can go back to 1 Peter chapter 2, and there we see how God uses the figure of the fact that in our salvation experience, we begin as babes. In verse, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. We start out as babes. We come knowing nothing, and just as a baby comes into the world and doesn't know anything, but, but, uh, we, but he is fed on milk. But what is the character of that babe? That that babe might grow. It does not remain a baby. In time, that baby becomes a grown person. And if that baby remains a babe, then, and it does not grow, we know immediately that baby has serious problems. That baby is not normal at all. That baby eventually is going to die because it is not growing at all. God picks up that idea, and it's, it, it's, it's 
such a delight to me as we've been going from place to place in the Bible, how all of these passages uh, begin to tie together so lovely and so beautiful as we begin to understand these. Remember Isaiah 28? Remember Isaiah 28? And uh, we there was a passage there that has been misunderstood again and again through the years, and now we see it clearly. We re, uh, remember verse 9, verse 9 of Isaiah 28. Whom shall we teach knowledge, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Now, to be weaned means that we're past the milk stage. We're beginning to, uh, to uh, eat a little more solid food. And then it goes on. Whom shall, or, or for precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. And remember when we went through this, we saw that this is the way we grow in grace. We start out as little babies. We don't know anything like a little baby doesn't know anything. It doesn't know how to walk. It doesn't know how to crawl. It doesn't know how to speak. It doesn't have any manners. It doesn't uh, 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 have any uh, knowledge of language. Uh, but slowly on, little by little, it begins to crawl. And then it begins to walk. And then it can run. And then it learns its first word, mama, maybe or data, and then it learns its second word and its third word, and pretty soon it has a vocabulary, and pretty soon it knows that it has to brush his teeth before he goes to bed, and pretty soon it has some table manners, and so on and so on, and, and over a period of time that little child grows into a, 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 a fine young adult. All right, that should be a picture of what happens when we become saved. We start as little babes. We don't know very much at all, but God has saved us. He has put within us a brand new resurrected soul, and, and our spiritual eyes have been opened to truth. And little by little, law by law, we learn a little here, a little there. I learned the other place. We fear and tremble before the Word of God, so we're sensitive to every nuance of the Word of God. We love the Word of God. We persistently study the Word of God so that we can know more and more because we realize this is where truth is, and, and so we are growing in grace. And that is the expectation that God has for the true believer. We start out with the first principles. I'm saved. I, I, uh, I know that uh, I, I am saved only by the grace of God. I know I've been a sinner. I know that Christ uh, died and rose again for my sinners' sins and so on. And later on, we'll, we'll, as we go on in Hebrews 5 and 6, we will get a catalog of some of the basic principles that we should start with. Okay, now let's go back to Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5. And we next read, now for the time, I'm, we're going to read verse 12 again. Remember, he's talking about those who are dull of hearing who are in a situation where they are not able to hear the word, even though the true gospel may still be proclaimed in that congregation, even they may have a preacher who still is reasonably true to the word of God, there is no application to anyone's life. God is not saving there. There is no conversion there going on. And But he's saying, uh, now he's uh, uh, describing why the church has come to that point. He says, for the time, for when the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. In other words, you're still babes. You haven't grown. You haven't grown at all. You should have been growing in the Word. You should have gone by, past the first principles to other things. You have, there's a lot more in the Bible that you should know. 
You know, the Bible, when we think about it, I used the figure a little earlier, the Bible is like a wonderful mine. It is full of golden nuggets. It's dripping with golden nuggets because the Word of God can't be more wonderful than that. It is, a, it is the Word of God, the Word of Almighty God. And if we are a true believer, what is our relationship to the Bible? Our relationship is, well, this is what I love. This is what I want. This is what I long for. You remember what we read in, let me read a few verses again of Psalm 119. And, and uh, that psalm really uh, uh, lays it out as to what is the nature of the true believer. In Psalm 119, we read in, uh, and I can just pick out uh, uh, verses at random. Verse 18, Open thou mine eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. Verse 33, Teach me, O Lord, the way of thy statutes. Uh, 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 verse 27, Make me to understand the way of thy precepts, so shall I talk of thy wondrous words. Uh, and uh, and uh, every place we turn, we see these kind of statements, how, how, uh, how uh, wonderful the Word of God is. And this is the character... And this is something that has to get into our hearts. It has to be uh, there as solidly as ever. That the character of the true believer is that he has an intense desire to know the Word of God. He trembles before God. He realizes this is the Word of God. And therefore, he has an intense desire to know the Word of God. Now, it's true that God has a timetable for revealing truth. He, uh, he, he has to reveal that truth. And it is true that there are major doctrines of the Bible. And the doctrine of the uh, end of the church age, the doctrine of the great tribulation, the doctrine of the latter reign. These are very major doctrines. The final harvest that is coming in in our day. Very major doctrines. And they are held up until the time of the end. They are, have not been understood. They just were nobody, no true believer was capable of understanding these. But in addition to that, there are a whole lot of other things in the Bible that slowly on mankind should be able to understand a little bit more. One of the first places they have to do is they start out with the basic principles of, of what salvation is and and these have been set forth in their confession. These have been set forth in their uh, church doctrines that they have been told to, to believe in. But that, that is not the Word of God. That confession is not the Word of God. That uh, those uh, principles that are set forth in their uh, church uh, uh, bylaws or wherever they are set forth are not the Word of God. The Bible is the Word of God. And they must recognize that because they are not the Word of God, they are, are placed there by men, therefore they are subject to error. And because a child of God loves the Lord, he wants to be as careful and as true to the Word of God as possible. So as he's searching the Bible, trying to understand this verse, trying to understand that verse, Oh, there's a lot of frustration. I just don't know what to do with that verse. I just don't know how, how to understand it. Well, that's okay. That's all right. God has told us that there is a, a time for revealing of truth. But slowly on, as we, as we puzzle over this and puzzle over that, then we should be fine-tuning, we should be correcting, we should be uh, knocking off a rough edge here and a rough edge there of the doctrines that our church holds. In other words, uh, uh, they, there should be improvement going on all the time. And as we are doing this, we are becoming more and more sensitive 
to the nature of the Bible so that in, and more qualified in knowing the Bible so we actually can teach others. We can actually teach others from the Bible, not from our confession, but from the Bible. Because the confession is just the beginning. That's the first principle, it's so to speak. That's the beginning of what we ought to hold. I'm amazed today. I'm really amazed today. In the most conservative Reformed churches, if a man really, a preacher really studies the doctrines that John Calvin laid forth in his Calvin's Institutes, and he really knows these and he teaches this, he's considered to be a very orthodox, conservative theologian. He is someone who is very trustworthy in the Word of God. But my, John Calvin, yes, he was a fine theologian in his day. Of course he was. We, he's not, he was a child of God. I'm firmly convinced of that. But he taught these 400 years ago. What happened in the meantime, 400 years? How, who has been fine-tuning what John Calvin has taught? Why should we feel like we've arrived when we are, are back there 400 years ago? We, uh, we are back, uh, we haven't made any uh, improvement at all. We haven't gone beyond the baby stage, in other words. And this is what God is faulting. And as a matter of fact, notice as we read in Hebrews chapter 5, it says, uh, uh, but strong, verse 14, but strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, to those, even to those who by reason of use have their senses exercise to discern both good and evil. Now, this is one of the marvelous byproducts that happens when we are truly spending time in the Word of God more and more. We're sensitive to truth and sensitive to that which is not true. So that if we are really studying the word and we hear our pastor say thus and so and it's and we sense, no, that's not true. That's not true to the word of God. Uh, he's implying that we can be saved by our works rather than by the grace of God alone. And that's not true. In fact, as we approach the end, that's one of the reasons that the true believers are, have been driven out of the church to such a high degree. They have become sensitive to truth. They can recognize good and evil in a lot better, more profitable way than the pastor can. And so they raise questions. Pastor, how can you teach this or how can you teach that? That's embarrassing to him. And so the next thing they get a visit, why don't you leave the church? Or we're going to, if you keep talking, we're going to have to uh, uh, discipline you and so on. And so that person is encouraged to get out of that church. Well, this is the this is the, uh, the problem. And you know, uh, this problem is, is emphasized uh, when uh, so many pastors today, as, they're, as they are uh, uh, hearing about the end of the church age, are coming up very strongly and saying, we do not believe in progressive revelation. We do not believe in progressive revelation. Well, come on, uh, uh, they, they uh, effectively are saying we are happy with the first principles that we've set forth in our confessions, and that's, far, that's, that's, that's all that is necessary. And they are repudiating the rest of the Bible. They are turning away from the rest of the Bible. In fact, they are in being disobedient to God's command of Daniel 12, verse 9, that some of these things have been sealed up for the time of the end. We have to realize that there is such a thing as progressive revelation, and we're living in that day when it, it, we're not, God is not coming with a further articulated word or a verbalized word. He is, it's all, this is the law, the Bible is the law of God. It's the whole statement, but God is coming with, with, uh, with, uh, 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 further understanding of this Word of God. Well, now we read in chapter 6, and again, this is a verse that I've puzzled over many, many times and not really understood. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again 
the the uh, foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptisms and of laying on of hands, uh, uh, and of resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. Now, on the face of it, this is a crazy statement, a, 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 a difficult statement. I don't want to use the word crazy. That's too big a word for when we're talking about the Bible. But in our minds, in our minds, it doesn't make sense. Come on now. These are the basic principles. And every one of these six statements that we read here, and we'll look at them in a little bit, or we'll, or we find are, are the foundation of what salvation is. And why would we leave that? Why would we leave that? Well, because in the setting, God is saying, so you have some understanding of these six principles, but my, don't you understand? The Bible is the reflection of the infinite mind of God. There's all kinds of other information included in these six principles. You're not going to find any uh, any uh, 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 statements that concern the age of the calendars of the Bible, for example, or, or it's, it's not going to tell you how how uh, the, the details of the Great Tribulation at the end. It's we're not going to have any of that information uh, in these six principles. There's a lot more that you should know. But let's look at these six, and in fact, it says, let us go on to perfection. Remember, Christ became perfect, that is, he became complete. And this is the same emphasis, let us go on to completion, that is, let's keep studying, 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 because we want to know all we can, and in God's own timetable, he will open our eyes, incidentally. And that's one of the joys of the true believer as he studies the Bible. Every now and then uh, we come and run across a phrase and suddenly we understand it. Remember we were looking at Acts 28, lest they be converted, and suddenly we understood this. Uh, we're, I, uh, heretofore, I've never understood it. But that's the nature of studying the Bible. And then we rejoice. Oh, isn't this wonderful? That Now here's another verse that I can see very plainly why God said it this way. And these verses that have this awkward language are particularly those verses that we rejoice about when we come to understanding. But look at the sixth, uh, the, uh, the foundation of our salvation. Repentance from dead works. Now that is taught in every church that we cannot be saved by our dead works. We have to repent from them, uh, from our sins and sinful activity. We have to turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. And many, many sermons have been preached about repentance or a faith toward God. Faith is a key word in the in the Jew, in the Christian's mind, it is the faith of wanting to uh, have a trust altogether in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now that happens to be an area where there's a uh, there should have been a lot of homework done, a lot of more under study in order to uh, uh, really understand about this faith, but. Uh, at least uh, there was a, a, a general understanding that when we have become saved, we have trusted in the Lord Jesus as our Savior. Whether that uh, was the faith of Christ or whether that was the, the, uh, our faith that God gave us, there, there was a debate about that because the people have not been studying the Bible carefully enough. But nevertheless, when they have become saved, they do have a faith in the Lord Jesus. They do have a trust in the Lord Jesus. And so they have the idea of faith. They do have a, a basic understanding of that. Or the doctrine of baptisms. Isn't it interesting that it's a plural word? And, uh, and uh, that's because God talks about two baptisms. There is, uh, there is water baptism, and there is spiritual baptism. And, uh, and churches have written paragraph after paragraph, book after book, and, and doctrine after doctrine concerning baptism. It is a very big subject that is well uh, talked about, but because... They have not been 
earnestly studying the word to find whatever truth there may be, they never progress. They never progress. The Baptist still believes what he did hundreds of years ago. The Reformed person believes what he believed hundreds of years ago. The Methodist, what they believed hundreds of years ago. And yet, they all have different conclusions concerning baptisms. So it's obvious they should have done a lot more study and continuous study in order to fine-tune and refine this. But there has been, that has not been going on. They're still in the milk of the Word. And so whatever errors they had 400 years ago, they still have today. Well, that's as far as we're going to get right now. In our next study, we'll, we'll, we'll start out with uh, right after the doctrine of baptism and go on to uh, with these verses of Hebrews 6.